I'm Charles Sturgis. And I'm Will Ploughs. And welcome to episode 7 of the Drive-By Podcast. We're, we're back. At... We're back in our makeshift studio. We are. We're, we're filming again. I actually really enjoy filming. I know. It is good, actually. It's a bit more personal. Personal. Yeah, personal. We I can agree. see you. You can see us. Hello. Hello. <laughs> yeah, what's, been go- what's been going on then in the world? Uh, well, we had for one, for the Formula One. We did, at the Hungary. 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 Um, Alexander Avon's box. I'm sorry. Alexander Avon's box. He was drying his box. He was, he was, caught, dr- he was, he was caught, caught drying, drying his, his box, box on the grid. I think he was actually caught another man drying his box I for don't, him. I don't think that has happened since James Hunt was racing. Hasn't it? <laughs> I think not, so, not so much in the open anyway. You know, there's some sort of box yeah, what, action going on the grid. What was there. actually going on there? Um, it was something it was a bit about, odd, wasn't it? I think it was those big leaf blower things that they use right. to like cool the. Well, they've got all sorts of dubs. uses, haven't they? Those leaf yeah. blowers. We've got driver, driver, brakes, and the air vents air as well. Box, yeah. But then they were doing it. So they're doing it, saying that it dried them out, didn't they? That yeah. And apparently gave him an advantage at the start on a wet track. Mm. So then the stewards got involved and said, please can you demonstrate this on the coarse gravel that we've got behind the paddock. So they're trying to compare the asphalt of the track to the coarse gravel they've got and how they're drying. It's really odd. That's a bit peculiar. Waste of time from the stewards, if you ask me. Uh, another good showing yeah. from Racing Point. Yeah, it was actually, it was wasn't it? Bad. Good start. The, the third grid, and third and fourth, a Mercedes one to four lockout. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, it was interesting. The... Red Bull, uh, Helmut Marco, Mark the Helmet. If Mark the, Helmet. the man with probably the best name in Formula One yeah, currently, definitely. Mark the Helmet. Definitely. Um, he's reported he's reported as saying that uh, more teams will be lodging complaints against Racing Point. Is that just because of how similar they are to Mercedes and how far ahead they are? Yeah. Sort of yeah, thing. I think you're probably right there. But what what they should have done, they should have done worse, and then no one would care. And then a few races down the line, everyone start to complain. What racing points should yeah, have done yeah. worse? They should have done worse at the start on purpose. Oh, okay, yeah. That's well, we're not the chief strategist. Actually, that's not a bit. Uh, get me in front of what's his name? What's the kid's name? Stroll. Lance Lance Stroll. Yeah, Lance. get me in front of, of Mr. Stroll, and we can sort it all out for them. Exactly. But I felt sorry for Latifi. Yes. Poor thing. The tea leaf. The tea leaf. Yeah. Is, no, well, that's, tea leaf is Cockney rhyming slang for thief. Is it? Yeah. Cockney, I didn't Cockney, know that. Oh, that's right. Cockney rhyming slang for yeah, it is. Yeah, you're wow. a tea leaf. You're a man of the people. Um, yes, so, I like Latifi. Cracking driver. I think he's Absolutely a good driver. Cracking driver. He's, a, he's a bit of a paid driver as well because he has got a some money bit, behind. A little bit. But what you don't know is before the race. Oh no, it wasn't before. It was during the race, Charles <laughs> said, um, "Latifi, what a hell of a driver he's going to be." And on the next corner, he spun out. He spun out. Yeah. <laughs> Not ideal. Because he had a puncture, didn't he? Uh, yes, um, he did. From the signs when they pulled out in the pits. And they oh, is that pits. what it was? Yeah, yeah, so he spun and had a puncture that went all the way down again. So he was 10th oh, at one point. He went and dropped right down to the yeah, back of the grid, a which is a shame. But they're going to keep him and George Russell for next year. Are they? Yeah, they're not, not changing. Oh, they've them. extended the contracts, haven't they? They were talking about, there was talk about maybe Russell getting pulled up to Mercedes, which we've touted a bit, haven't we? Yeah. We've spoken about the possibility. Yeah, but I think they're right with Bottas, aren't they? I think to stick with what you know. The, the Ving man. The big man. Valtteri Bottas. A bit, a bit of Valtteri. A bit of Valtteri. Uh, I, think, I, yeah, I think they probably are better off staying with that because why why fix it if it ain't broke? Exactly. Um, I completely agree. But I think what but this has speaking proven, of being broke, oh. Max Verstappen, didn't they put it into the wall? What a, what a cock up. What an absolute cock up that was. I don't understand how it happened. He just turned. <laughs> it is, and, and the car didn't. Happened. And the car didn't. He just turned. Uh, nothing like that. What they needed what there was going was, um, head. They needed that to where Alex Albon started so that it would be nice and dry. Actually, yeah, that's not a bad idea. There you go. Uh, you see, you've got Alex Albon at the back with a leaf blower on, yeah. on the front of the car. <laughs> but what I was saying is that what this Hungary, Hungary <laughs> race has proven is that Hamilton really is in a league of his own, isn't he really? Yes. He is just, isn't he? He's a yes. fantastic, fantastic racer. But... Verstappen is not can't be far off him as a well, driver. Well, what did we say in the last episode? We said Hamilton, Verstappen, Bottas, one, two, and three. Yeah, did we? Yeah, we did. We did. I watched it back just to make sure that we did do that. We that. Did do that. Oh, right, so okay. we are basically Mystic Megs. We are. We well, I think you you touted that opinion. Oh, yeah. Other you. than that, yeah. I'm not. I quite like the hung, hunger. Mm-hmm. Well, we see what some people did. What? They, there's only one because there's no fans anymore because of COVID. Mm. They hired a house. On top of the hill, which overlooks the entire race. Really? And so they had a big party there, 
Um, not social distancing. And so they go oversee all the race. Ah, how cool is that? That's a really good cool idea. That is super fans, actually. that is, actually. That is, yeah. Were they, do you think they were Max Verstappen fans? Because they get a lot of the Dutch fans to, mm. uh, to there. I reckon I don't know, because they had Ferrari signs fans. everywhere. They had Red Bull signs. Oh, they had really? all sorts, yeah, like saying hi. Could you one. see them from the track, do you reckon? Yeah, they could. That's oh, how really? They, yeah, they could, oh, cool I didn't view. see that. But how cool is that? It is very cool. I think we should do that. Shall we? I think people will probably do that the next year. I wonder how long they've been going there to watch the race that lot. Probably quite a while. Probably quite in that one quite often. I think also what this race has proven is that Danny Rick, Ricciardo, the world's smiliest man, mm. is number one at Renault. Oh yeah, Ocon was way down. He mm. was. He just wasn't quite. Do you rate him, Ocon? Yeah, well, compared everyone, to the rest of the field. Everyone really liked him. Probably a quite couple a nice of years chat. ago when he got kicked out of racing point. point. I think that was more because it was unfair. I think yeah, no, that definitely is because of that. Um, but everyone really liked him as a result of that. And has he really set the world on fire since he came back? Not Can't as say he has. such. Can't no. say he has. He's not a very big personality, is he? But he oh, I know nothing about But Danny Rick, for the fans... Oh, did you see him high-fiving fans that weren't there? No. He was running down... I don't know. He was going... <laughs> pretend to high-five, high-five. Yeah, he was, he was shaking hands. Yeah, his face mask on. And that whole thing, which was very funny. Yeah. It just seems like an incredibly likeable bloke, doesn't he? Yeah, he Danny does. Ricardo. He does. My favourite thing... Was that? Um, was when he was on Top Gear doing mm. a show, and it was, um, someone asked him, "Is there anything you want to ask Daniel in the crowd?" And so someone shouted out, "What does the back of Lewis's car look like?" <laughs> <laughs> but he took it really well. I th- I don't think Daniel I think Daniel Ricciardo was one of those drivers who just missed the boat. Do you think? He, I think he will. He's just... been in Formula One for quite a while. He has. He's been in it for a while, and he's just never. He's always missed the boat on his cars. Mm. I don't think he'll ever win a championship. No, I don't either. I do no. agree there. But I do think he did very well in his... Was it 2014 when he joined Red Bull? Mm. For them, for about four years. He was on top form. But he just was wasn't good quite good enough to beat Hamilton or Rosberg, was he? No. And then Verstappen came in and buggered it all up mm. for him. He really did. And he's just a hell of a driver. So what have we got coming up next time? Silverstone, so, isn't it? Yes, we had Hungary last weekend. And next weekend we've got Silverstone. Silverstone. They're doing two, aren't they? Two off the back. Isn't one a mm. 70th anniversary special one? It's called the Emirates. It's called the Emirates. Emirates Grand Prix, mm. 7th anniversary. It's all sponsors, isn't it? It's oh, of course, yeah. of course it is. Sponsoring tech. Um, that'd be great to have it back, though. It would be nice. And it's good that it's coming to England as well, considering everything that's going on. Yes, exactly. Um, it'd be nice. It's no fans, though, is it? No, no unfortunately not. But what they're saying is having to urge people not to go around the outside, because you can see the track from it. Oh, the road, of course, can't yeah, yeah, yeah. It goes past. They have to tell fans not to park up there and oh, park right. in the fields and stuff. That's a bit of a shame. So it is a bit of a shame. Um, yeah, the Sky F1 presenters came on and said, please, we hate doing this, but please don't come and bug it all up from everyone. No, so, exactly. Uh, yeah. So who were we thinking about for that? Hamilton. 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 He's probably the obvious choice, isn't he? Best car. Bottas, second. Verstappen, third? No. I think it'll be Hamilton, Verstappen, Stroll. That's Bottas. a big claim. I think he proved in the last race, though. He's got the legs to go. Yeah, but is he quicker than Bottas? I think he could be, and I'll probably get team orders anyway to let pass. In last year's Mercedes. In <laughs> last year's Mercedes, they're gonna the go Pink Panther's Bar- going to come past. They're going to go to Bahrain, I think. Are they? Mm. They're is talking that about doing... recently? I think it is quite recent, but they're talking about doing two races there. One yeah. on the traditional F1 track, and one on a faster version, which is almost like a big loop. Not like an indie car, right? Almost like an indie car, but it's obviously there's a few more twisty bits. Really? There's a couple of them, and it's just taking the edges off the regular Bahrain track because that is a bit oh. of a boring track, isn't it? Yeah, it's going to be even more boring. I've got no corners. Yeah, I know, but they're going to get more overtakes, won't you? You're going to get, some, get some big speed going on there. Yeah, they will. A couple of new DRS zones, mm. and you'll be if you come flying, back there going past. Be like the nice straight at China. I don't think they're going to go to China either, are they? I think China's completely. Yeah. Bad. Thank <laughs> God. Anyway, right, well, uh, we'll leave Formula One. Yes. Done with Formula One, and we'll go on, and we shall do some motoring news. So, what have we got in the motoring news this week? You had some news from China. I've got some news from China. Um, apart from coronavirus, they're also bringing us a new. <laughs> they're, also, they're bringing us a new four x four. Are they? Is it new? It is. You say new. It well, that's my point. It's called the Way P01 or P01, I haven't quite decided. Um, so it's, they just stole the name from McLaren and put a zero in front of it? Pretty much. Um, they've, 
Way is the luxury SUV division of Great Wall, who do those oh, big pickup yeah, trucks yeah. and those sorts of things. Also, it's a Chinese cars. knockoff. Yeah, yeah. It's a knockoff. So we've had some big 4x4 news, Defender, Grenadier, Bronco. Now we have the Way. That's P-O-R. probably the biggest news Absolutely. out here so far. Absolutely. Um, Anything special about it? No, it looks exactly like a mashup of the Grenadier, <laughs> the Defender, and the new Ford Bronco. Of course it does. What, I know. what else are we expecting? Why though? have they got no imagination? Because they don't need any. It's just the knockoff thing, isn't it? They do. Let some... the Westerners do all the work. And then they do it cheaper. And, like the boot of it looks like a Grenadier. And the mm. insert of the rear wheel looks like a grenadier. Bronco came out, then this comes out. These preliminary renderings, but that's exactly what it looked like. It looked yeah. like a bastardised version. I saw a bit of Sangyong Carando in there as well, which is a, obviously. Have Sangyong ever car. made a nice car? Um, I remember my dad once got given a Sangyong Rexton. The Rexton is a dog ugly car. I think it was the most hateful car as a courtesy car for his truck, and it the was Muso. the worst car he's ever had. The Muso. That was crap. That was a pickup. Mm-hmm. There was another one. What was the one that the big people carrier sang on? Rexton, wasn't it? No, that was the big 4x4 job. Oh, I can't remember. Oh, I can't awful, remember. Awful. But they were all car. foul. So they don't do... But they're, they're Korean. Oh, they are, of course. They're Korean. Yeah. But yeah, I saw a bit of sang on Corando in there, um, too. But China obviously do have a bit of a... Because we know about the land wind, the Evoke knockoff. The what? The land wind. Have you never seen the land wind? I've never seen that before. The land wind. Bring it up. I will. There I, we bet go. That's a, I bet they just the land wind for you. <laughs> I bet there's a... Take a look at that. What is that, that is thing? Dog ugly. Um, that's one of the worst looking things. It looks a bit like an evoke if you drawn it in Microsoft Paint or described it over the phone. Or it looks a bit like it, but they painted it with them. a blindfold on. So I have some. I have some Chinese knockoffs for you here. Oh, which well, really does then. show why would you need to buy Western products when you can in do China that? they've got it all themselves. Your your laptop mm-hmm. does that take? Uh, I'm not sure what operating system on. I'm guessing it doesn't. Um, it doesn't work off Microsoft Binbo. <laughs> no. Binbo spelling B I N B O W S, not, not Binbo. <laughs> um, do you like? <laughs> Would you like your latte from Sunbucks Coffee? Oh, for God's sake. Your chosen coffee of choice. <laughs> to be fair, it might say it's better than Starbucks. Where do you get your sporting goods from? SportsDirect.com. Adidas, Adidas, JD Sports, anything like that. No, you need to be getting them direct from Tuna. <laughs> That's just brilliant. Um, Tuna. And then you're feeling a bit hungry. Yeah. So you stop for some lunch on your shopping trip. Right. Would you like a Whopper from King Burger? No, they haven't just called it King they Burger. They call it King Burger. There's King Burger too. And then how so do they come up with these names? You hop into an electrical store. All right. But, but they're, they're translated probably directly into Mandarin. Like I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So you want to be, listen to a bit of music? What do you put on? Do you put anything? One of Dr. Dre's products on? You're an idiot. You should be using Deets by <laughs> Nanny. You, deets. Deets by got Nan. Me, got my Deets. They just changed the B for a D. They just changed it the other way around. And then after your full day, you've <laughs> you finish your um, you finish your day shopping and you're a bit peckish. Right. You want some fried chicken. So where I are do, you going to yeah. go? There's only one Not... place to go. You've got to go to KFG. <laughs> KFG with the man on the top of it there who looks like Colonel, a child molester. Colonel Dazon. <laughs> Colonel Sandoz. I think Jesus that's awesome. Christ. So I think China. There's no wonder then with their cars. That they basically have just taken everything from the Western world and give it their own Repackaged names. it with some really, really yeah. stupid names. But at least it gives us something to laugh about. It does. At least. It gives... So China, do carry on. Thank but you. For the love of God, get your own design department. Yes. Not yes. a photocopy. Well, they didn't do a bad job with the honky. Because what the does that... honky... No, but you see, the honky was probably made on the behest of the Prime Minister of uh, China. Yeah, so, you. Mr. Xi Jinping. We're going to yeah. have... Dots on our heads. No, I don't think he watches this podcast. I don't think many people do. No. But on this... <laughs> so, when you bought... When you confident, asked, confident as ever, Charles exactly. is. When you ask your presidential limo to mm. be made, you've got to make it perfectly, otherwise you're going to be yeah, killed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's why that's the only good car in China. If you have a government-sanctioned car, mm. you're fine. But if you want some of this neo-capitalist copyright... Sh- 
Yes. Then you're going to end up with a land wind yeah. or the way PO1. Anyway, before we end up with dots on our head from uh, Marksman's Above the Roof, what else have you got for me this week? Uh, a bit more 4x4 news. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Um, well, I say 4x4. We've got the Mustang Mach-E. Oh, yeah. Raised. I remember you well, showed me a video of this, actually. There's the Mach-E and then there's this race car, which makes an unholy noise. It sounds like a demented dental drill. Oh, it does. It does, oh, it doesn't properly it? does. Wee. Oh, it's awful. That thing scares me. Do that again? No. <laughs> that, thing scares me. that thing scares me, because I haven't been to the dentist now for five years. I can tell. I can't tell you haven't been there. Um, yeah, dreadful. Not dreadful, but terrible sounding noise, but it's a good sounding noise. I think, I think it sounded alright. It sounds like wailing cats at You night. know how Tesla have ludicrous mode? What's this got? They've got unbridled mode, which I think sounds better. A Mustang, take the bridle off and it's, mm. it's loose. <laughs> Sorry, that's terrible. <laughs> Loose mustache. I read. I read on CNBC, the American news. Sorry. Yeah. They said that it has a top speed that's not street legal. Hey. It has a top speed that's not street legal. How does that differentiate so then think, from any other car? Any other car in the world, because every from car a honky and a reliant robin. Probably. You know, or maybe one of those little. Uh, <laughs> ma- um, what what are like, they trying to get at there? Yeah, yeah. What are they trying to get at there? Well. The car only does 160 miles an hour, supposedly. What? What, from 1,400 horsepower? Electric car? Yeah, it'll only do 160, according to this, which I think is a little bit strange. My Land Rover will go fast, past street legal. Yeah, it will. It will, that's from 1920. Exactly, it's very (laughs) old. Um, So, a bit concerned about the top speed on that, but I think it looks good anyway. Yeah, it it does, it looks good. Have you got any motoring news for me? I have. I've got stuff from Maserati, which I was reading about. Mm-hmm. You know, this year they were meant to bring out the MC20, which is like their new sports car, supercar thing, yeah. after the MC12, which is an amazing hit. Anyway, they're bringing out the MC20, but it's not just any sports car, it's a super sports car. So what's the That's what they're calling it anyway on the website. What's the difference between a super sports car and a supercar? An MC20. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know why, I don't think they see it. Can I see it? Yeah, I've got a picture here for you. Anyway, it's got a V6. Twin turbo, three litre engine. That just looks like a Ferrari SF90. They've exactly, rebadged it? it. Well, they're made in the same place, basically, aren't they? It right? looks identical to it. Mm. Maybe Maserati have been going to China a lot and have lost their imagination. <laughs> it's a lovely oh, looking car, though. Maserati. <laughs> Maserati. <laughs> Charlie, Sorry, that's, that's a bit bad. Now you will have a red dot behind you. Named at you. But, do you know what's called the engine? What? The Natuno. So they've named the engine? They've named the engine. Why would you do that? Well, it probably translates to Natalie or something, doesn't it? Anyway, everything derived they're from the Formula 1 car. Well, yeah, well, what they're doing is having to modernise the entire production plant. Yeah. So they can make this car. Which oh, I, right. think is, I think it's awesome. It's a good step for Maserati. Because do you know how many cars they currently make? Can you think of what they currently make? Is it like three? Five. Five cars, so Maserati. You've got the... the Quattroporte. Yeah. The Levant. Yeah. I think I'm the only person in the world that actually likes the Levant. Um, there you go, I'm my sure If you ever want to do a plug for me, the Levant is lovely. Oh, no, no, I'm not sure. The I Levant, the Quattroporte, Gran Turismo, the Ghibli, pointless car. We're still car. making the Ghibli? Pointless car. Really, it is a pointless car. Why would you not have a 5 Series GT? Or it's a like a 5 Series yeah. GT, that's exactly it is, what yeah. it is. And they make the Gran Turismo and the Gran Cabrio. Oh, you ever seen the Gran Cabrio? You never see them. They never do, but it's beautiful. It's mm. absolutely stunning to look at. I just don't know why. But that car has been around for 12 years or something mm. like that. It's been around for a very long yeah, yeah. time. Anyway, they're adding this to their collection. But anyway, what makes this car a bit more special? Is it going to be a race car for the road? Ooh. What? Maserati revealed a special Sterling Moss prototype. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's yes. It's proper horny. It's proper horny. I wonder what they're going to make it look like. The SF90, probably. That looks fantastic. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I like the Sterling Moss edition. Other than that, I think it looks a bit a bit boring. What? I think that looks a bit boring. That's it's got that's a black and funny white. grin. It's got what's called a Glasgow smile. If you give someone a Glasgow smile, you cut their cheeks up to their ears. I thought it was a Chelsea that's smile. That's what it is. Look, because there's the regular bit. and then it's Oh, got God, you're right. You are. There. It's got Glasgow like smile. Like the Joker. It is, yeah, it's a bit Joker. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly yeah, they're what making this so it's basically like a sports car, race car for the road. Mm-hmm. So it got me thinking then when I was doing some news, edit, like kind of totting up my news, that actually you can actually buy race cars now, and they're selling the Le Mans winning Viper GTRS. So a bit more news. How cool is that? Oh, the GTRS. Oh, that one there. Oh, yeah. This Viper here, they're actually selling it for sale right now. That so that was a Le Mans car. So why don't we buy it? 
Well, what are they charging for well, it? Over a million pounds. Ah, oh, right, okay. Fair so enough. That, but as then that got me thinking, what well, else can you other buy? Other ones can you get? So then I got onto this website, I can't remember what it's called, like classiccars.com or something anyway. And so what you can buy is the March Formula One car. How cool would that be? The Ensign Formula One car that no one's ever heard of. Mm, it yeah, didn't, I was never didn't, heard of it. Didn't win anything. The Minardi Formula One car. Cool. No, the the yellow cool. one. Really cool looking car. And... The 1981 Lotus 87 is Ooh, for wow. sale in Yorkshire. All four that? of these are for sale in Yorkshire. Who drove the Lotus 87? Uh, Nigel Mansell yeah. and Elio De Angelis. And what makes this one really cool? That's good knowledge, that, isn't it? It is very much so. And what makes this one special? It's actually the first ever Lotus yeah. um, carbon fibre yeah. F1 car. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah. Right. so it's okay. actually proper special, but it's all POA. Oh, I hate POA. I hate POA. Just show us the price, like, whether yeah. it's out of your price range. Yeah, it's like when an employer doesn't show the salary that they're trying to charge for a new job. That really annoys me. POA, to me, just sort of means whatever I feel like charging, mm. depending on how yeah. I feel on that day. Yeah. Well, the Minardi's 239 grand. Mm. So that's probably a quick basis or whatever the one is. But I wish they would show the price, but I think that's really cool. I'd love a collection of Formula 1 cars. I would too. I'd love to wake up in the morning and go to my little car house and say... But would I rather have this, car. this sort of racing car for the road? But the MC12 was a racing car for the road, wasn't it? That was what that was. Was the MC12 to be. road legal? Yes, it was. I think it was. It was. Chris Evans was. had one. Did he? Yeah, he was good to work in it. Oh right, yeah, yeah. that's quite cool. Um, yeah. What else have you got anyway? Or we're sticking on this. Well, if you want a racing car for the road, yeah. Um, I mean, this has been out for. This has been known about for a little while, but the, mm. we're going to see in August. The Gordon Murray Automotive T.50. Oh, yeah. T.50. That's quite Gordon Murray, isn't it? Yeah. To put a point in between your... It's a bit like this with our drive underscore by podcast. Oh, God. Good play. Um, so, yeah, we'll see that in August. Oh. It's going to have a 3.9 litre V12. Oh. And it's got a Made fan type Murray. thing at the back. You remember the old fan car? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got, that's what it's looking at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Red that lines, is going to look awesome. That it redlines at 12,000 RPM. I think that's... That's basically like a Formula 1 car. Oh, exactly. The V12 Good is... work, Mr. Murray. Oh, absolutely. The inspiration for this V12 came from the 1991 World Championship McLaren. Oh. So they're trying to... That is a byword for cool. Oh, absolutely. Isn't it? That is awesome. I'm I think that's that. just awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Anyway, should we end the news right I there? I think that's about it. We haven't really got much of the... Uh, the world news. is quite boring at the moment for car news, isn't Very it? Very not so... There's not much coming out. Unless actually. it's electric. It's a bit quiet. Actually... On electric car news. What's that? Have you seen the video of the Tesla? Oh, I saw that. That was hilarious. Wasn't that so funny? That was brilliant. Basically, if you haven't seen it, it's a Tesla in America mm. going along the highway, goes through a little puddle, and the entire back uh, yeah, falls off. The whole rear bumper anyway, comes what I love off. It, what I love most about it is, anyway, the guy pulled over and expected someone to come straight away from Tesla because they're amazing and futuristic. Had to wait over an hour. Was on someone the phone for No one came for over an hour. Was on the phone to Tesla. And one of the employers actually said it was an act of God. Is that not the most American thing you've ever heard? Well, no, you still get act of gods in insurance policies. But in, in Tesla terms, mm. an act of God, as we know, all Tesla drivers reckon that Elon Musk is the Messiah. Yes, so technically, that's an act of Elon Musk. Oh, yeah. Sort, your, you sort yourself out, Elon. Mr. Musk, there you go. Get yourself... You heard it here first get on your, Get off your big throne. With your, sexy, your rocket. with your sexy shorts on. With I'm always going to imagine you now. I'm always going to imagine you, Elon, with your... Uh, satin shorts. S3XY satin shorts. I think that's absolutely We do ridiculous. cover a lot of Tesla, don't we? We do, because they, they're, always, they're always in the news. He's mm. always said something silly. His stock is tanking yeah. for smoking weed on Joe Rogan. Then he buys it all and it all goes up again. Exactly. Or he says, I'm going to sell this for 420 whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now cars explode. Oh. And also, actually... I haven't told you about this one yet, but there was another Tesla. It wasn't really a Tesla's fault. They actually got attacked by a barbecue in America. Attacked by a barbecue? <laughs> yeah, so very American thing. A Ford F-150 pickup truck was driving along the highway with a mount of a barbecue. On the boot. On the on boot. The if you can't get any more American than that, the barbecue actually then deployed Fold itself off. Oh, into no. a Tesla that was following it behind. Oh, how so, close yeah. was the Tesla to the back of it? Probably too close. Too Maybe close. the Tesla drivers are the new M3 drivers. Quite not M3, but just BMW drivers. Audi but they're, they're or... more Audis now. Audi yeah, true, very like true. To see behind you. Yeah, but how funny is that? That is brilliant. That I is like good. seeing 
bad things before Teslas because mm. it's just quite funny. It is quite funny. Because everyone reckons they are made of solid gold and they're not. Especially at the end drivers. of the day, bits can fall off them. Bits can fall and off. And do. And they do, as we've seen. Anyway, yeah, I think that's a good way to end the news. I think that's about it. And, and we'll go involved. Drive by, destroy. Do another one for you. What you Last got? week, it was very difficult. Yeah. Um, what have you got this week? So, we're going to do Group B rally cars. Oh. So, yep, let's get on oh. with Drive By Destroy. Right. Group B rally cars of the 80s. Jeez, that's not, a, that's not an easy one, though, is no, it? No, it isn't, really. What uh, have you got for me, then? The Lancia 037. Yeah, lovely. It's, I think it's 037 technically, but everyone refers to it as 037. I've never heard anyone call it 037. No, I've never heard of it. Never, anyone. ever. Um, and last, then we have... Actually, last wheel wheel drive car to win the rally championship in 1983. Yes, I remember. I think so. in 1970. Was it 83? Mm. It was with Walter Roll at the, at the wheel. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah. I have a feeling it was later than that. Anyway, Lancia 037. Yeah. Renault 5 Maxi Turbo, little one. Awesome looking, very, very car. awesome looking car. I think the road version looked better than that. I thought the Renault 5 Turbo looked better mm. than that. Weren't you saying how much one of those sold for recently? Yeah, one of them went up for sale. Well, I think, I don't know whether it was sold, but it went up for sale in 2016, yeah. the 1986 version, between 290000 and 360000 That was valued at. It's pretty, That's amazing, pretty it? big money, That's, that. big That's money, strong yeah. money. And the last car, the Audi Quattro. The first daddy. version of it, the daddy, the game changer, mm. the four wheel drive that changed the game oh, completely, completely absolutely. for rallying. Yeah, yeah. Well, if actually... it wasn't four wheel drive, don't oh, bother. Yeah. yeah, exactly. That actually got its inspiration, though, from a VW military vehicle. I remember you saying, yeah, the, didn't the, the four wheel drive system come from the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in 1977. And they had to develop it for ages and then get the legislation changed so then they could enter. Exactly. And then just wipe the floor with everyone. Oh, absolutely. It's brilliant. So. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go first. Yeah, I went first last week, so now it's your turn. I will do it. It's difficult, a bit of a difficult one. Difficult one, this. one this, because you've got three very pretty cars, three cars steeped in the history. I don't think Renault's all that pretty myself. Charles, you said it's yourself cute. that it's you cute. like small French cars. I like a small French car, but that's just a bit too. Mad. It looks like it's been at the gym for quite a while. Bit, Everything's. Yeah, I was just about to say. It. It's a bit gawpy. In its back Better back looking back. as a street car. If I had to have the street version, but if I had to have these... Well, the Lancia 037 street car is very good looking. Do you know what the body panels of that were made of? No. Kevlar. Really? Bullet so you're basically bullet, bulletproof Lancia. Awesome. Lancia. I think that's fantastic. What are you doing anyway, then? I think I would quite like to drive the Renault 5. Yeah. Small, very quick. I imagine... You're very low down. Mm. You'd yeah, be yeah. quite frightened in that. So I think that would be a hell of a thing to drive. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, and then I would buy the Lancia. Oh, really? Mm. Because Interesting it's so choice. Pretty. Did you know a Bath designed that? That was a joint effort with was a Bath. Really? A Bath designed it with Pininfarina. That is a byword so, for looking pretty well, and they awesome really, and cool. The, I think that's amazing. So instead stylish. of just making a rally car that was just meant to... Look do awesome. rallying but they did it on a complete shoestring budget exactly they they went and wait okay well let's make this good look because mm. obviously they have to make some road going versions of it so let's make it yeah, really yeah, good looking yeah. so I think that's probably the best thing it was also technically known as the Tipo 151 yeah yeah a little bit of uh, anorak knowledge for you there <laughs> you are an anorak though at heart absolutely does that mean then that you're destroying the damage? yeah because <sighs> the only thing I think the Quattro the early Quattro didn't look very good in rally spec in my opinion, I think the Lancia looked a little one there. Um, I think the Lancia looked better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In rally spec, I'd agree with the martini, in martini colours, yeah, yeah, yeah. or even the little top tip one. Yeah, yeah. Toe tip, toe, toe tip. tip, top tip. Yeah, that's a 1983 car, I think, that was one. Mm. So I think that looks better. The Audi was a bit more, and it's a bit. I know it was very successful. You like successful, the road going version, though, don't you? The road going version. If I was going to have the road going version, it would have to be red. Okay, yeah. Like 
Gene Hunt's in Ashes yeah, yeah. to Ashes. Yeah. You, he used to go on about that car all the time. I do, I do. That is a fantastic looking car. Yeah, and if, if I was going to have an Audi of any choice, I'd probably that have that. That and an Audi RS2, which I always found quite a good looking oh, car. The yeah, first yeah, yeah, yeah. estate version that was really naughty. Mm. So, yeah, unfortunately, I will be getting rid of the Quattro. A bit reluctantly, but the yeah. Quattro is going in the bin. Driving the Renault 5, just, so, just because it would be quite frightening. And the Lancer is just too beautiful. To get rid of and to get rid of, have. yeah. So I'd have it, and I'd just park it in a room like this, and yeah. just look at it. Yeah, you wouldn't. It's that smell pretty. And just all the smell. Got to be a bit dirty, I think. Oh yeah. As well. Bit of dried mud on it, something like that. From Monte Carlo Rally. Oh, oh um, God. Give yourselves a Christ on the drive-by podcast. I think yeah, no, this is, this <laughs> is, this is, this is yeah, a bit sexual. Though, isn't it? <laughs> too much like moaning porn. in the corner. We've never described as porn. Anyway, go ahead. Let's hear it. Let's what hear would it. I? I'd be similar with you then. I'd buy the Lancia. Because mm-hmm. I have the exact same reason as you. I think it's just beautiful to look at. Yeah. Last rear-wheel drive car to win the yep. World Rally Championship. Like you say, yeah. Um, so it's got good heritage. What I love about that story as well is they didn't care about Walter Roll wanting to win the Drivers' Championship. They just wanted to So they pulled it. out before the last race. Oh, because, yeah, because they didn't... And then yeah. Hanny Mikula in the uh, Audi Quattro won the Drivers. Oh, really? Yeah, because it was such a dead heat. Um, so yeah, I'd be buying the Lancia just because it's stunning. Yeah. Um, Look at it. It's very small it's very now. We need a bigger version of that. Yeah, we do. Um, I would be buying, mm-hmm. not buying, sorry, driving the Audi Quattro. Yeah. Just because I'd love to have a go in that absolute daddy car. 100%. 100%. So famous and it's just iconic. I'd love to have a go in it. Iconic. Something it is iconic. It's a used word, but it is. It is iconic. In, ra- in Group B rally terms, that's probably what you think about mm. that and the RS2000. Bugger. I should, that's an honourable mention. Oh. RS200. RS- was it, it was 2000, wasn't it? In the 1980s? Yeah. No, it was the RS200. 2000 was in the 70s. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, so then I'll be destroying... Yeah, yeah, so then I'll be destroying the Renault 5 Maxi Turbo, mainly because Aww. Hasn't got as much heritage True. as either two. Isn't as good looking as either two. I don't think. It's cute, but it's not pretty. And I don't love small French cars as much as you do. So, yeah, for that reason, I would be destroying the Renault 5 Maxi Turbo. But also, if you then, like you mentioned, had the Ford RS200 involved. Different game. That's an that honourable mention, game. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But it's not, it's not in there. It's not in there. We have to work with what we've got. Exactly. And I, I, but I would both respect yours. I just find the Audi a bit boring. If it was in road spec, then I'd have it. Really? If you had to look at all of these in road versions... I just think to drive the Audi would be so cool, it would be awesome. Because the O37 was based mm. on the Monte Carlo, wasn't it? Yeah. It basically was the Monte Carlo, but they did do some others. I think it, sha- it mm. shared the same cabin as the Monte Carlo, yeah, but yeah. other than that, it didn't. The Renault 5, if that was the street car, I would have. I would go... If you were just going for the street car, I'd go with yeah. Audi to buy... Yeah. Really? Right, driving, really? Drive, yeah, still drive the Renault 5 and I'd destroy the... Um, Have you not seen Lancia? it in red? Yeah, Street I know, but I just, I just like the Quattro more in road spec. Mm, what would know. you do if it was in road spec? I'd still keep the Lancia. Yeah. You'd keep yeah. it? Would, I you, love would the, it be the same? Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I'd still be completely the same. Yeah. One thing I love about the Lancia racing as well, the chap who was the chief principal, Yeah. Um, do you know what he did in his free time? He was a powerboat racer. Ooh. Collector, oh, and I think that's, that's really cool. cool. That's very that cool. really cool. Mixing it up a bit, yeah. a bit of a uh, bit of water in there too. Exactly. Excellent. Well, there you go. That wasn't as difficult as last week. No, James Hunt was a very difficult thing to argue. Yeah, it was very much so. Compared but to, still yeah. a bit of a one. So it I think was. we'll probably go back onto road cars for it next, yes. unless I have a brainwave. Which or, doesn't happen very often. Or you tell me you want to do power boats or something like that. <laughs> oh, can we do power boats? No, we're not doing boats. The drive by. It's <laughs> we not do the a float by podcast. You drive a boat. Drive you a boat. You pilot a boat, don't you, technically? Shut up, Charles. No, you don't can pilot you a boat. Okay. You drive a boat. All right, fair enough. Lovely. Or sail a boat. <laughs> <laughs> right, yes. I think that roughly brings us close to this episode. I've really enjoyed it again. Yeah, it was good fun, actually. In our, I always uh, enjoy doing this. Uh, yeah, I think we need new cars each week. This week we've got another Ford GT. Yeah. And we've got the Bullet Mustang as well, which I found, and I just remember what an incredibly beautiful car it was. In, no, it is a great in car. Green. In fact, do you know what I'd love? I'd I love watched Bullet recently. Did you? Yeah, yeah. Great film, isn't great it? Great film. I think if you were going to have a Highland Green Mustang, yeah. like exactly like that. Can you get that colour now as standard? Or not standard, but as a paid extra? Uh, yes, you can. You can. Uh, well, you can get the Bullet Tribute Mustang. Yeah. 
which is the new one, which I think just looks awesome. Mm, does My look dad awesome. had the, one of the last old Mustangs, not an old Mustang, but like the version before this one. Really? He had that in Bullock's Bay. He bought it, I can't remember when he bought it, but he sold it during the financial crisis and roughly got what he paid for it. <laughs> Most of you kept it now. Oh, yeah, they're, pro- they're worth a lot of money, I think. Yeah, yeah. They're worth it's like my dad, money. when he was younger, wanted to have an RS200 because mm. when they came out, they weren't that expensive. No. And now, and he was never allowed one because his dad yeah. said no. And um, now they're worth upwards of a quarter of a million oh, pounds. Oh, that's, just, yeah, very much. So, yeah, yeah I think no, I don't lost think. out on a good cause there. Absolutely. But yeah. I think if I was to have the, an old-style fastback Mustang like that, I'd have to have it in, in that um, not in that colour, but in um, that it, that colour, but dull, not pristine. Mm. Something that I wouldn't mind scratching it up a little. Looks bit. a bit worn. Yeah, and like it's been used in road. No, I think you're right there. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's anyway, it. thank you anyway. very much for tuning in. Thank you very much. We will see you all again next week. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Drive underscore Bike Podcast, and me at Charlie Drives with an underscore in it too. And marvellous, we'll see... He won't tell you where the underscore is. No, I know. (laughs) It's in there somewhere. You've got to guess. Um, And we will join you again in our studio... Next week. This time next week. Fantastic. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.